What's good, Raptor fans? Just a quick little update. When I made the video on Seika Demboya and the Raptors being interested in him, it was before the trade happened with Brooklyn, where Seika Demboya and Jahil Okafor are going back to the Brooklyn Nets for DeAndre Jordan and four second round picks with some cash, I believe 5.78 million. And with the intentions that DeAndre Jordan's going to get bought out and signed with the Lakers. But in terms of Seika Demboya, I mean, this feels even more realistic now that there's a possibility we could actually get him maybe down the line because of the fact that his age does not match the timeline of the Brooklyn Nets. And just want to put that out there real quick. I made this video the same day that the trade happened. So sorry about the late post and enjoy the rest of the video. Peace. Welcome back to the Airborne Podcast. I'm your host, Ajit. There's no big boy Braz, but we got Thanos back on the podcast. They do. Now, this is not something that the Raptors have made official, but these are rumors I've been hearing for a while now that Masai Ujiri is interested in Detroit forward Seku Demboya. And he's a raw talent right now, very, you know, still very fresh into the league. Um, still has a lot of room to grow. He was born on December 23rd, 2000, which is crazy to think about how far, how young the NBA has gotten. Exactly. So he's 20 years old. He's a, a French-born player. And he's listed at 6'8", weighs about 231 pounds. And he was a first-round pick in the 2019 draft. He was a 15th pick in that draft. And he's played two seasons for the Detroit Pistons. And I don't really trust the developmental team. Like, their, their developmental program just isn't it. Unless you're, like, a, a star talent coming out of college you're not going to get any better being in under that <laughs> under that roster. I mean, you see the the players that they have right now, like Cade Cunningham and Sadiq Bey, they seem like they're ready to like just flourish. Uh, but aside from that, if there's people that they draft that, you know, that are raw talent but need to work on their game, they never really succeed. Look at Stanley Johnson. He's the best example. Killian Hayes was injured, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But there's also players like Henry Ellenson. There we go. That's another one. Henry Ellenson and Luke Kennard. Like, they got all these players that just seem like when they come into the NBA and they play for the Detroit Pistons for a few years, they never progress. They're either the, even, same, uh, they're either the same or they regress. Oh, yeah, go on. Yeah. No, but even uh, even though there's this one player that I'm going to mention, mm -hmm. he dropped numbers, but, like, it, was, it didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's on your drum and, like, I don't know. It's just even though he dropped twenty twenty uh, a twenty twenty game, it didn't really affect the game at all. Like he just he just dropped the stat, dropped the numbers, and then they still lost the game. Yeah, there might have been some times where he won the game, but I feel like he was he didn't really develop the the player he wanted to become. Yeah, he's dropping numbers, so like it didn't really affect anything. Like he, yeah, him and Greg Monroe, like they had their yeah. you know they came in with the the type of. You know, they were post players coming into the NBA. Mm -hmm. And as the NBA developed into more of a three-point shooting league, yeah. like their games never grew. And that's why you don't see Greg Monroe in the league anymore. And Andre Drummond had to sign a minimum contract for the Philadelphia 76ers. Going from a starter to now backing up a guy he had problems with in the league in Joel Embiid. And that's why, like Detroit, I don't know, I guess, like they've been such a losing culture since yeah. the since the 2004 era with Sean C., Rip Hamilton, Ben Wallace, Rashid Wallace, and Tayshaun Prince. Like, they just haven't had that kind of success since, like, maybe 2008. Yeah. So, so for me, I feel like taking him, Sekou Dumboya, off of the Detroit Pistons and bringing him to the, the Raptors under Masai's wing, under that developmental program, I, I think will definitely, you know, um, speed up his process of becoming – a solid NBA player. And he showed flashes of it in Detroit, right? Like he showed his raw talent, um, I believe in the 2019, 2020 season. And even last year, he didn't get as many minutes, not as many games, but he definitely shows you the potential there. And two trades I threw, I ran through the trade machine that could bring him here. And I'll tell you the reason. I think some Raptor fans won't agree with this trade, 
but one exact one. Well, both these trades have that player in there that a lot of Raptor fans might disagree with me, but I'll tell you the reason why. So I got Chris Boucher and Utah Watanabe going to Detroit for Sekou Dumboya and Josh Jackson. Jock, <laughs> Josh, Josh Jackson. <laughs> so let me repeat that because I just want crisscross applesauce right now. That's Sekou Dumboya and Josh Jackson coming to the Raptors for Chris Boucher and Utah Watanabe. Now, Raptor fans, hear me out. The reason why I'm saying we got to, I mean, it's probably, it's probably smarter to trade Chris Boucher now is because his contract's coming up and he's going to ask for a lot of money and we're getting a lot younger and he's almost at that time where he's going to hit 30 years old. He's going to be 30 soon. Um, I don't think it's worth bringing a player. I know he's still young. We could pay him, but why pay him when we could bring someone similar and develop them at a younger age, right? And there might be other trades in like in the league that could probably bring you better value for Chris Boucher, especially with what he did last season. But this is just one option. I'm just saying it doesn't have to be this, but I'm just uh, like, you know, I'm just kind of like bringing this up because it's a potential trade that could be a possibility because of the rumors I've heard about Masai and Bobby Webster and the Raptors being interested in Seiko Duboya. The second trade option I ran through the machine the ESPN machine was Freddie Galipsi and Chris Boucher for Josh Jackson and Seiko Dumboya. And, you know, even Josh Jackson, he, he hasn't had the career he's wanted since coming into the league. He was the fourth pick in the 2017 draft after Jason Tatum. But he, saw, he showed flashes last year, dropping 30-point games and stuff like that. So it's potential, like, that we have two guys we can put under our wing that are still young under the Raptors developmental program, and hopefully they become something. Detroit has a lot of forwards. They got Jeremy Grant and Sadiq Bey. That looks like what they're going to go with moving forward. So I feel like these two pieces are expendable for them. And we're not losing much. I know Chris Boucher, he's a Raptors favorite. I get it. He's still, you know, in his prime. But I don't think the Raptors are willing to pay for him because he's not one of those players that take us, you know, over the top. If we have a superstar on our team, yes, he'll be a perfect piece to be around him. But since we're going younger, I feel like, you know, we traded Norman Powell last year. Lowry left this season. Chris Boucher is around in between that age. So it doesn't make sense to give him that type of money, you know? Yeah. That's just my personal opinion, but you tell me if I'm wrong. No, no, I agree with you. We're still building our identity right now. We have a bunch of players that are like over six, six, five, six, six. And Boucher, yeah, he does shoot the three and he does def- like defend pretty well. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, just like yeah, we're probably gonna have to pay him a lot more next season. Mm-hmm. And he's not he's not really a, a bulky dude. Like he's not he's not meant for the center position. He's more of a, like a power forward. Take a Boya has a similar body build to Boucher. Yeah, yeah, no, but he like he has potential. Like because uh, he's he's still young, right? How old is he? Like twenty three? No, he's twenty years old. Turning twenty one. He's twenty years old. Okay, yeah. So what I was saying is he's not going to, Seiko won't be on our team like right the second. The moment we trade for him, he's not going to be on our team. Like he's just going to probably be in the G League for a bit, build his confidence back and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And we've seen flashes of him, like how you mentioned in the first year of his career, like he dropped like crazy numbers. Like He he had like certain games where he dropped like double digit points. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But overall for that year, I don't believe he had crazy numbers. I'm going to get him. I'm gonna get no, into but the yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. You have something to say before I... No, 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 I was just saying, not like, not like, it's not going to show in his overall stats, but I'm just saying, like, there were games where he actually did pretty well. Yeah. This is the, the, the amount of, like, I know there weren't that many players around him that actually created offense, but he did pretty well that he first de- year. He definitely, yeah, that year when they had a lot of injuries and he got a lot of, not a lot of minutes, but he got to start some of those mm-hmm. games. He showed flashes and he he got the he got the Detroit Pistons like they were buzzing about him. Yeah. yeah. Right. In 2019-2020, for the Pistons, he played 38 games, started 19, averaged about 19.8 minutes. He shot 39% from the field, 28.6% from three-point arc, and 67.4% from the free throw line. He averaged 3.1 rebounds, 0.5 assists, 0.5 steals, 0.2 blocks, and 6.4 points per game. And then the following season, 
which was a down year for him compared to the year before. Even though he played more games, he, he played 56 in total that season. Mm-hmm. He only started 11. His minutes went down to 15.5. His field goal percentage was 37.9%. So it went down. It dipped a bit. His three-point percentage went down, 22.6. Yeah. Free throw percentage went up to 70.3. Rebounding, 2.6 rebounds per game, 0.8 assists, 0.4 steals, 0.2 blocks, 5.1 points. For a player that's coming straight from France and didn't go to college in the States, was only 18 years old when he came into the league, uh, still raw. I mean, he's 20. He's, he's younger than yeah. Luke. He's, yeah. he's, young, he's younger than everyone on our team if he comes to the Raptors. Yeah. And... I mean, he's he's actually what Scotty Barnes' age, maybe. I think they're both the same age. Oh no, he's a year yeah, older. He's, he's a year older than Scotty because Scotty just went from nineteen to twenty this year. And oh yeah, Sekou Dumboya is going to be twenty-one at the end of this year. So I'm still the same age, almost. Yeah. And I, I feel like three-point, you know, obviously three-point shooting. He's going to work on it. Yeah, I mean, Boucher wasn't the greatest three-point shooter coming into the league, and he started his NBA career a, a lot later than this man. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I mean, that's just something that came around, and I wanted to get your thoughts on it because I'm not, I'm not really expecting too much from him. He has the the height, like the size and the height, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Like he's got to put in the work and make it happen. The way he like the way he handles the ball and stuff, I think like from what I remember, he looks mm-hmm. he feels looks a lot more agile than Chris Boucher. If the developmental program can put in their work like they did with Pascal. I feel like he could be a 2.0 version of that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we have high hopes. Obviously, we look at some some of these flashes and potential in certain players, and you try to put, like, a label of what they can be. Like, you know, when you see guys this size, you're like, oh, my God, I hope he's a Giannis. I hope he's a Pascal Siakam. You know, you just want that to happen, but it doesn't always happen. But you're just hopeful based off how far the Raptors have come with their program. Yeah. And we don't know if this trade is going to happen. Raptor fans do not get, you know, don't get pissed at me for, uh, <laughs> you know, proposing this trade. It's just two things that actually worked out. If it happens, I'm okay with it. But obviously, a lot of people aren't going to agree with it because Chris Boucher is a fan favorite. And I feel like, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of forwards on our team, so it's going to be hard for him to get minutes even now. Yeah, yeah. But if the future works out for him, the future's bright. And if he develops... And just goes up on, uh, you know, progresses his game, especially his three point shooting. If you can get that up, I can see a spot for him if the Raptors straight for him for sure. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you hit the like button. If you haven't, like it. Yeah, make sure you can like it, bro. <laughs> if you have subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to it. What are y'all waiting for? Stop slacking, bro. And we'll be back. The Raptors have, we already know they've been very, very quiet with this offseason, but, you know, we, we got to keep the, the, the spice up on the Raptors. You got to keep it rolling. You got to keep the Raptors news up. You know, a lot of these rumors, that's what people look for. And when something pops up, it gets everyone, every Raptor fan's juice is flowing, right? Um, this is definitely one of those things, even though it's not a big name like Kawhi Leonard or something like that, with the direction the Raptors are going, we just got to hope that we overachieve rather than underachieve going into the season. But yeah, till then, stay blessed, stay woke, and please, Stay safe. Peace. Yeah. 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 The press I won't for sure you gonna need.